what is your go-to response when you screw up? Yes. Are you going to ownership and vulnerability and teamwork, or are you going to the scarcity that Emilia just described? And so I shifted back into that deep knowing, even though the scarcity was chattering. And so I think shifting out of that scarcity, focusing on the relationship, focusing on the intention, focusing on your purity there, that really helped me level set my emotions that were completely deregulated in that moment. Conscious couples, business partners, and singles committed to attracting their dream partner. Welcome to the Conscious Couples Podcast, where we share our life, love story, and combined relationship expertise to help you create and consistently cultivate the most magnificent, intimate relationship possible. Never again will you feel hopeless and alone in your intimate relationship challenges. Having accumulated thousands of hours coaching conscious couples and individuals all over the world, as well as starting and growing a global business together, Alan and I are here to guide you and all things relationships. Thank you again for tuning into the one place where it's not about you or me. It's about the, the we. Conscious couples and singles out there, welcome back to the Conscious Couples podcast. We are officially on episode number 10. 10 in a row. Go us. No, I'm just joking. <laughs> uh, huge shout out real quick to Next Level Podcast Solutions for making this podcast possible. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay, so for episode number 10, we have how screwing up can actually improve your relationship. And as always, ladies first. Thanks, lovey. Welcome back, everyone. Uh, so how screwing up can actually improve your relationship. This is going to be interesting because I know that everyone around the world has probably experienced some degree of this feeling of I've screwed this up. And there is a common belief that we see time and time again when it comes to relationship coaching where couples and singles, conscious couples and conscious singles they oftentimes stick out to us as those people who see that their screw up can improve the relationship. And those people that struggle to see this are those people who we really, really want to help in this moment where if you happen to feel as though you have screwed up, know that there is and can be a bright future on the other side of that. But when you have that story that you might be telling yourself that, man, I've really screwed this up. And this is going to be the end all to our relationship. Everything's looking downhill as a result of this one screw up. Right there is that moment that we want to kind of interject ourselves in and kind of help you realize that when you screw up, it doesn't have to be the downfall of your relationship. It can actually be the quite opposite of that. It can be one of the biggest foundational blocks that can pivot your relationship in the direction that you really want to go in. And I think a lot of people struggle to see moments where we screw up, where we're imperfect, where we aren't the best human being as a stopping point. Whereas we have really turned those moments into opportunity, opportunity to build, opportunity to thrive, opportunity to exercise our inner work, our emotional regulation, some of these skills that we've developed that have been truly the foundation to our incredible relationship that I right now take a lot of pride in. And it's funny because, well, funny or not funny, but when Alan and I were sitting down really looking at our relationship and our history around this, we struggled to have something come up right top of mind. And I don't say that to really gloat, but it is something that I am proud of because he and I have set a standard to our relationship where we don't fight. And for the context of this, this conversation, I want to say that because though it might not be super relatable, hopefully it does give you something to aspire towards simply because those moments where it could have been a punching bag, our relationship could have been, you know, the, the thing that gets us feeling as though we're, we're a victim and we're, you know, it's the circumstance that we don't have control over. We really have taken an alternative approach to that, irrespective of what we have learned and what we haven't learned, what we've observed and what necessarily hasn't worked for us in the past. And we've totally pivoted into something that has served us. And so 
I know, baby, you're going to go into a story. That certainly helps to demonstrate this, how screwing up can actually improve your relationship rather than be the downfall. And we hope through this conversation, each one of you in your own personal experiences can after this story, after this topic, after this conversation can really look at those challenging moments as an opportunity for your relationship to grow and thrive. So one thing I want to say before we dive into the story is if you've ever heard me talk about failing forward and Emilia just mentioned how we don't fight in our relationship and that's thanks to her, but we had past relationships where we did and we learned a lot for sure through that and through those screw ups. Mm. So while we don't fight, we do have discussions and we do still screw up. And so I'm going to mm-hmm. illuminate one of those here. So for Emilia's 26th birthday, I wanted to surprise her. And I would remember I was in the studio. This is back when Kevin and I had the studio. Mm-hmm. And I was with Kevin and I was like, I want to surprise her and I want to go away to Newport. She loves Newport. Mm. We both love Newport. And if you've ever been to Newport, the cliff walk is gorgeous. And it's just one of the best places on earth uh, from my perspective and hers as well. Mm-hmm. And so we wanted to book a hotel, but it was covid and I was like, okay, we're going to do an Airbnb. Mm-hmm. And there was a bunch of different Airbnbs, but I think this was like two weeks out from yeah. your birthday. And I, it was really challenging for me to find one that was perfect. And they were super expensive. And back then, this is when she was 26. She's 27 now. This had to be a year and a half ago, at mm-hmm. least. Mm-hmm. And Next Level University, you know, has been doing very, very well since then financially. Um, Tucker's licking my hand. Uh, Tucker's our mascot, by the way, for the Conscious Couples podcast. Mm-hmm. Hi, handsome. Little four pound chihuahua. But I was trying to ball on a budget back then, mm-hmm. for lack of better phrasing. And these Airbnbs in Newport were like thousands of dollars. Yeah. And I didn't have that kind of money back then, at least available. And so I found this one that looked really nice in the marketing. And I looked through all the photos and all that, but I, I can't. I can't claim to be an extraordinary Airbnb or as a matter of fact, <laughs> I never used Airbnb. Prior to this, that I was never your even first used, time? Yeah, I never even used it. Wow. Yeah. Kevin was helping me and I just decided, you know what, I'm gonna pick one. Let's do this. It's all gonna work out. I didn't <laughs> I didn't read the reviews. I should have done more research. Oh. I screwed up. I screwed up. Mm. But I don't have any experience. I've never used Airbnb before this. This was mm. my first Airbnb experience where I actually piloted. And so I've been to Airbnbs, but I've never booked them myself. Mm -hmm. So we get there, and it is like a really not so great place. And I was all excited to surprise her. I had dinner uh, prepared. We were gonna. I was gonna make her a chicken salad, and the kitchen was so gross that we had to actually clean it. Mm. And so, you know, the pictures that were shown on this Airbnb were very, very well marketed and they weren't the reality i mean the place was dirty we ended up having to clean the place it was so cringy there was like just things were in complete disarray like from my perspective just to add context like it was a place that you didn't want to take your shoes off you didn't want to put your coat on the chair like you like there was dirty dishes like everywhere and when you think of like a getaway or like a traveling spot it's like You don't want to have to worry about that stuff. And when we first got there, it was like, is this even the right place? I know. (laughs) I know. But you were trying to be kind. Yeah. And I was like, is this even the right place? (laughs) So we get there. The only good thing about this Airbnb was the location was like right next to uh, the cliff walk, which Mm -hmm. is what I had planned on taking Emilia to for her birthday because the cliff walk is so beautiful. Overlooks the ocean for those who don't know Newport. Yeah. Overlooks the ocean, the rolling waves. It's high above the ocean, so you can kind of see a large perspective of the coastline. So it's really, really beautiful and very inspiring. The the houses also, which is why it's also famous, the houses along the cliff walk are huge mansions that are very historical, have a lot of um, design elements that have drawn me and you in. And it's just classic. incredible have you ever toured the mansion i have yeah when i was little yeah like and that Um, that was one of the things that also helped me dream big was the huge huge mansions and um it wasn't that but it was what the journey required of those individuals to be able to build something so magnificent but i digress 
All right, so we get into this Airbnb, and I had this whole amazing weekend planned, and I invested a good amount of money. I think it was like six hundred and forty bucks or something crazy, which was a lot. Which at was the time a lot for a struggling for, and entrepreneur, exactly. Yeah. And and for not struggling entrepreneur, I yeah. take that back. You guys were doing well, yeah, but, but I understand. Very small. Here's the point: it's six hundred and forty dollars for the weekend for a terrible Airbnb. That's yeah. the problem. Yeah. And so, anyways. Uh, working through this even now, just reflecting back, I'm, I'm still having those feels. Yeah. And w- I wanted to cook dinner. I wanted to take her to the cliff walk. I wanted to do all these things. And here we are having to actually clean the place when we get there. Yeah. And I thought it had a whole backyard. And I remember taking you in the backyard. <laughs> <laughs> do you remember? I took you in the backyard. Oh I was like, oh, my. there's beautiful gardens right, back here. And then garden. I got in the backyard and I was like... <laughs> It must have been one of the other ones. <laughs> oh, that was so And it rough. was. It was one of the other ones. There was, was one no of the other garden. Ones. No garden. It looked no, like it was, there was like, a, like a, a dog park. Yeah. <laughs> kind of like dirt. It was a it dirt was pile. Yeah, the garden, yeah. the beautiful, magnificent I've, garden yeah. was a dirt pile. Yeah. And so anyways. How about that? Yeah. <gasps> that was rough. So I screwed up and I knew it. And yeah, I can come up with a million excuses. I've never booked Airbnb before. It was only two weeks out. Kevin and I are early entrepreneurs. I don't have, you know, it's interesting now. I mean, we went to the $750 one this past weekend and life is much better now. <laughs> Honestly, it's like now we have like a quarterly budget and like right. NLU is doing well. We've grossed a lot of money. Uh, it's awesome. It's just interesting to go back to broke entrepreneur days, for lack of better phrasing. We weren't yeah. broke, but we were investing our capital. We were wisely. investing our capital wisely in a studio, yeah. and we had debt to pay off in the business and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. It's just things have really evolved since then, which is kind of cool to reflect back on. Mm-hmm. But I digress. I knew I had screwed up, and I had a lot of sh- shame around that. You can already sense some of the guilt and shame, even coming back up now. Yeah. And I screwed up, and fortunately. Emilia was very kind to me. So these are the three steps that I took. Number one was ownership. And this was really hard because I could have made excuses. I could have said, oh, you know, it was the Airbnb guy's fault or I'd never done Airbnb before or I could have puffer fished and been like, oh, this place is fine. Like I could have made Emilia feel bad for not wanting to have to clean the place. (laughs) (laughs) When we didn't have cleaning (laughs) materials. Yeah, right. Yeah, that was fun. Um... (laughs) <laughs> it's all coming back. so step one is ownership and i took ownership and i didn't make excuses and i said babe i screwed this up so bad yeah. and i remember i was creating this salad this chicken salad Aww. in the kitchen after we had cleaned the place <laughs> and uh i remember just kind of laying my head down and being like i feel so bad i'm so sorry this was supposed to be a special 26th birthday and i've screwed this up mm. i'm so sorry and the second step here is vulnerability i told emilia i feel terrible this sucks. I'm so sorry. I screwed this whole weekend up. I wanted to make this special and I, and I sucked and I sucked. (laughs) I sucked. (laughs) That's it. I sucked ownership and vulnerability. And I actually remember crying in the kitchen Yeah. while I was creating the salad and it was supposed to be a rotisserie chicken salad and it was just gross kitchen. (laughs) And so anyways, the third step here is teamwork. Now, fortunately, Emilia didn't make me feel bad while I was already down. Mm -hmm. She was very sweet to me in that moment. I think that's the key. Because if you weren't sweet to me, what are the chances I'm going to go out on a limb again next time I want to do a nice getaway? I'm going to be so afraid to screw up Mm -hmm. that I'm not even going to try next time or I'm going to recluse or I'm going to puffer fish or I'm going to get mad. And that can cause a fight. And fortunately, Emilia's always been very sweet in those vulnerable moments. And fortunately, I've always been vulnerable and taken ownership. And I think that that's, That's that's the point here. And so now we were just last weekend in Vermont and we had this beautiful Airbnb that Emilia absolutely adored. I think we might buy it. No, uh, yeah, right. <laughs> and there's actually a picture on my Instagram of the s- the cabin under the stars on an orchard with a little pond, a little duck pond right there. It was gorgeous. A little wood burning stove. A little wood burning stove and mountains the in the best background. Plants. Um, and we'll black bears. I'm just joking. <laughs> 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 but now we do quarterly getaways mm-hmm. with a $750 budget. And Kevin and Taryn do their quarterly getaway. I think they went to a mountain Airbnb on the mountain snowboarding weekend. And we did the orchard. Mm-hmm. And now I work with Emilia to choose the Airbnbs because <laughs> I don't want to have to clean them <laughs> when I get there. <laughs> this is like pretty funny. Mean. We learned that about uh, ourselves. But the <laughs> point is, is that we learned from yeah. that experience. I learned about myself. Emilia learned about herself. 
I was insecure that weekend and we actually had had some deep talks about some insecurities that I have and we've come so far since then not only yeah. financially but as a team and and in terms of teamwork mm. um, and so now um, when we go away we don't have to clean the place <laughs> and, and that's the moral of the story <laughs> <laughs> I love it. No. And, and I think that to provide perspective to, um, I know that, you know, when you're in a relationship, it's you, you do, you want to try to put your best foot forward unless you really have felt like your best foot forward isn't enough. And when you feel that way, sometimes you can feel like you've lost all hope where you want to give your partner that, that, stage to kind of shine in and you want them to succeed and you want to see them them succeed but when they don't there's that moment of like you kind of feel like the rug has been swept out from underneath you sometimes especially if this is a conversation that you and your partner maybe have had before or if this is something that you guys have been working on or working to and in that moment your night or uh, whoever it is in shining armor doesn't actually step forward. And th- I mean, this was a surprise. So I had no expectations. Right. But I think that one of the things that can grow legs and run away from us in relationships is expectations of each other, of your I'm relationship. I'm sure you didn't expect to have to clean the place. <laughs> I certainly did not expect that I couldn't take off my shoes or I was afraid to like have you put the or, chicken on the countertop. Like and we're we making it get... sound a little worse than it was, but I'm sorry. To... It was, it was bad. bad. It, it was, was really bad. bad. There were trash, like the trash was all it over, really was like terrible. the clicker to the TV. Like we had to clean because there was gunk on it. Like it was gross. It was gross. It was gross. It was gross. And in those moments where it's so easy to, I think revert into what is common, which is just, I I think that misery loves company and that's so easy to revert into because it's a lot harder to slip into vulnerability. It's a lot harder as a woman, I think, and also like a more dominant woman you had mentioned earlier when we were talking to also see vulnerability in a man and try to see, okay, well, what does that mean to our relationship? When you slipped into ownership, that was so big for me because I've had relationships in the past and other, like not just intimate relationships, but a lot of relationships don't take ownership when they have screwed up, you know, be it friendships, be it colleagues, be it family members, like whatever. Ownership is hard because that takes a lot of courage to say, I've messed up. Hi, everybody. I'm Caleb and this is my beautiful wife, Angela. Uh, We're pretty new clients to Al and Amelia and they're conscious couples coaching yeah i think we started back in early 2022 around february and our relationship has completely shifted in a few short months i think one of the biggest takeaways from working with them was our communication which i believe is an obstacle for most couples um i was talking to Ange in a way that i would understand but it wouldn't connect to her which caused some arguments but al and amelia were able to point that out and now i can talk to her how she's going to understand she can do the same for me. Yes, our communication went is way better than um, it's ever been. We've been together for about six years now. And as well as just really figuring out what our core values personally are, but as well as what they are um, in our relationship. So being able to communicate from that space is really valuable. So thank you, Alan and Amelia, for everything you've done and for leading the way. And when you see that, it's like, whoa, that's different. That is different. And then on top of that, as a man going into vulnerability, that's not what I had seen in a lot of my past. Instead, there's a lot of defense, soldier up, fight, attack, make someone else feel bad, right? And and you slipped into vulnerability, which I know is not super common. And I know there's a lot of stigma around it of having that be not a strength and having that not necessarily be something that is sexy or that is really positive for the relationship. But when you can misstep or when you can be imperfect in the relationship, own up to that, slip into vulnerability, and on top of that, come out with teamwork because of what this relationship means to you, that is everything. That is enough certainty and security to get through any dirty Airbnb you could ever have. 
Now, like you had said, we definitely make sure to choose the Airbnbs together. We've put in a lot of systems in place to like, okay, we never want to go back there. And that was the pain that we experienced together. Instead of trying to cover it up, quite literally sweep things underneath the rug, like we just called it out for what it was and sat in that discomfort and sat in that pain, shame, guilt, blame. But what we didn't do was twist the knife in more at that moment of I'm an imperfect human. We are imperfect. Now let me make you feel worse about that. And I think that I really, I personally really appreciate that recognition because it's like, sometimes it's like, well, what do you do now? What do we do now? I don't really want to clean this. Like this is, this is not a safe space to me. And we can either work through this together or we can not. And a lot of couples, I know that when they don't necessarily know how to work through that, the let's not is a very common path. For sure. And I think a lot of times, and this is an, uh, maybe another episode for another time, but a lot of times people focus on results, not intentions and effort. Yeah. And in my past relationships, when I would screw up, it was always focused on, especially with surprises or birthdays or anniversaries or whatever, mm -hmm. it would always be results over everything, yeah, not yeah. intentions and effort. Or the and relationship so, itself. Exactly. And, and so we say, focus on the relationship over the results and the results will come. And that's sort of a mantra that we've created with our clients and in our relationship as well. The relationship yeah. is more important than results right now. 100%. And it always will be. And when the relationship is rock solid, the results will come. And that's why our next Airbnb trip was always so magnificent. Mm -hmm. Because the relationship was sound. Yeah. Because the teamwork was there. Mm. And so this is a super powerful episode. Um, I want to ask you a question as well, babe. Yeah. I've never been with someone who has done as well as you have of not making me feel bad about myself when I screw up, when I already feel bad about myself. Mm -hmm. How are you doing that? And, and what's the process that you go through? Because I'm sure there was a small part of you that wanted to be like, I can't effing believe you booked this for $600. Like what a waste of money. Right. Mm -hmm. um, I'm sure there's a small part of you that wanted to say that or, or felt that way or thought that how, how did you, how do you do that? How do you be so kind in moments of frustration? And this is the context I'll provide real quick before this question. Life is going to squeeze you. Mm. And Wayne Dyer, RIP, used to have an analogy about an orange. When you squeeze an orange, orange juice comes out. Mm -hmm. You're not going to get apple juice out of an orange because it's what's inside. Right. And life is going to squeeze us. And when it squeezes us, it's sometimes it's just love that comes out. Other times it's junk and cycles and negativity and trauma and yeah. stress and hormones or whatever and life is going to squeeze you in your intimate relationship more than anywhere else because that's what's closest to home and hurt people hurt people that are close to them right and i think you've done a world-class job at not hurting me mm. in those vulnerable moments and i just wanted to ask like how mm. thanks baby mm -hmm. so i want to validate what you had said there is and was not is, but there was a part of me that was frankly scared to be in a dirty place because my subconscious, my, my fear based subconscious, the scarcity based subconscious, it didn't just look at the dirtiness. It looked at the decision making paradigm of that human yeah. who had lived there. And so I, and, and this might sound extreme, but I know a lot of women listening to this can resonate with this. I quite literally feared for safety. What, safety. Yeah. Was this, I remember like double checking that the doors were locked, wanting to go in there and see like, okay, what were all the exits here? Were there cameras in here? Like, because it was like, I'm a little, I'm, I'm very concerned to sleep in here. I, I don't know what the sheets look like. Like I just, it was something that I didn't even want to like get in the shower because I was concerned about even undressing. So like all of those things were going through my mind in those moments of like, oh man, it, we have two nights here. How the heck are we going to make this work? <laughs> and so a part of me wanted to like, babe, can I take your keys? <laughs> <And> like, <laughs> 
Bye. <laughs> <laughs> like, peace out. Like, this was fun and all, but like, I'm going back to Massachusetts. <laughs> like, you can have fun with this Airbnb. Um, no doubt. There's that part of me that was there. And that was hard to override. You don't want to watch Interstellar <laughs> and eat chicken salad. Didn't matter what food, yeah. what movie, I was like, bye, boy. <laughs> like, with all the love in the world. And I think that that relates to a lot of what happens in moments where you do have an upset apple cart. You can let fear and scarcity and um, what that extrapolates out for you to be run you. Or you can look at the relationship like you had said and said, what what was the effort here? What was the intention behind this? When I focused on the effort of what your intention was here, it immediately withdrew me from that scarcity place. I know that you are home. And so I know that my safety is with you. And I know you would never do anything intentionally to jeopardize that. I know that in my core. I knew that when I first met you. And so I shifted back into that deep knowing, even though the scarcity was chattering. And so I think shifting out of that scarcity, focusing on the relationship, focusing on the intention, focusing on your purity there, that really helped me level set my emotions that were completely deregulated in that moment. So the process you asked about is like, it is, it's recognizing that you're in that scarcity, that that fear chatter is there and screaming and winning in those moments and saying, okay, but, and I am with this incredible human being who would never intentionally put me at risk. And your ownership helped to validate that. You helped me lock the doors. You helped me in those moments that I was scarce. You were checking in with me. You were helping me. You weren't just like expecting me to just be okay with this. Right. You sat in that discomfort, which further validated that we are actually on a team. I'm not just crazy because I'm cleaning the countertops before you and I eat, which a lot of partnerships in the past would have made me felt. Yeah. And in the past, it's easy when you feel that way of not being seen, heard and understood that that scarcity is actually a legitimate thing because look at the surroundings. I, in the past would have felt crazy or wrong for feeling that way. Not seen, not heard, not understood in that. And so that ownership component, it makes it a lot easier to shift out of that scarcity gear into more of the abundance gear of focusing on the result. I'm um, sorry, the relationship and focusing on the intention and effort. And when you focus on that, that grows. It's just like anything else. When you, when you shift your consciousness onto something, it will grow. So if I was solely concentrated on this idea of whoever it was a guy that lived there, coming through that door, I would be so uncomfortable in those moments and it would have been a lot easier to act out of scarcity and maybe have guilted you in those moments and maybe shamed you in those moments and maybe made you feel like complete crap about like, oh, you don't know, like it's an app. Everyone uses Airbnb. How do you not know how to book an Airbnb? How do you not know how to look at the reviews? How do you not like blah, 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 insert shameful experience here? It's a lot easier to shift into that when your focus and intention is on the scarcity. And so shifting again into that high gear, that allowed all of the things that you were doing to grow. Wow. He knows how important this place is to me. And so out of all places, we're here. Yes. Okay. You mean Newport? Newport. Yeah. Out of all places, we're here. You had a whole like agenda planned that you specifically chose because you knew how much it would light me up you grabbed a movie and specific food to support my goals and my dreams it was not an interstellar it was inception to make me think right wow. it was rotisserie chicken salad because you knew you were trying to support my healthy food choice you know i love chicken you knew I love rotisserie chicken. You knew I love salad. So focusing on those details that you were really strong in, instead of making you feel like absolute crap for the ones that you weren't, you had no reps in that arena. So it's, you know, I could have jumped down your throat, but what does that do for anyone? If we're going to be there for two days, what does that do? 
not only for those two days, but also the long term of the relationship. So to really bring this full circle, I projected each path of I could have done that scarcity that, you know, made you feel like a piece of crap in those imperfect moments. That does no good for the long term trajectory of this relationship. And because you matter to me, because I care so much about you and because I aspire to personally be someone who does choose that alternative road that focus on focuses on the intention, the effort and the relationship rather than that person who just focuses on results because I've been there before. Trust me, there have been partners that I've been with that have screwed up and I've just made them feel like crap about it. No doubt that doesn't serve the relationship and that hurts people. And I would never forgive myself to have you hurting as a result of me not seeing you in the areas that truly you've worked so hard to be there for me. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Uh, One thing I want to clarify for everybody and well said love well said is when she said um, the, the, the why power underneath it is that wanting to be with me Mm long-term is the aspiration. So why would she take this lesser road Mm -hmm. and make things worse? So, so one thing that I want to share with our listeners and viewers quickly if your partner doesn't value you enough and your relationship enough to try at least try to take that higher road, mm-hmm. then they probably don't want to be with you long term. Or don't know how or to Or don't be. know how to do it, right? Yeah. Or don't believe that it will be long term. There's a lot of layers to this. Or believe in themselves enough to be the person that you want them to be. They might have low standards. They might not know how. There's a whole lot of layers to this. But yeah. one thing I want to clarify for everyone, sweetheart, you had said like bye boy. And I just want to clarify, like, what you meant is, like, take the car and leave the Airbnb. Yes. Not leave me. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. So just so you know, that wasn't clear. (laughs) Sorry. (laughs) Yeah, no, no, it's okay. But (laughs) I want to go to the gas station. (laughs) But I want people to understand (laughs) that that was never once in her head. No. This screw up was never once like, oh, okay, that's the end. Right. No, this is the beginning of a new chapter. Right. From this screw up. Mm -hmm. And I think it's important for us to make that clear. Thank you for clarifying. Absolutely, sweetheart. Yeah. Absolutely, of course. Okay. So. The question that I wrote down for everyone to ask themselves is this. Mm. What is your go-to response when you screw up? Yes. Are you going to ownership and vulnerability and teamwork? Or are you going to the scarcity that Emilia just described? Mm. Because now here we are a year and a half later. We've, we had trouble even coming up with screw ups. Yeah. And, and again, we, we don't want that to come off as arrogant or gloating, but this was a real screw up for me. It took us a while to come up with this one because we don't screw up that often. And if we right. do, they're very minor. Yeah. But this is a perfect one where it was like, wow, I definitely messed this up. But we had a wonderful weekend. Mm, yeah, we did. We ended up making love. Mm-hmm. We ended up cooking dinner together. We watched an incredible movie. I do think it was Interstellar or Inception. It's one of the two. It was Inception. Okay. Sounds I remember. Good. Okay. It was a very fond memory. Okay. Sounds good. <laughs> and we did the cliff walk the next day. We went to this beautiful restaurant Breakfast. overlooking the ocean, which is the place I originally wanted, yeah. by the way. But it was like $1,400. <laughs> and I wasn't balling back then. Uh, but we ended up having this magnificent weekend. And I remember we got home and your family was like, oh, my God, how was your weekend? Because we never go away and all we do is work. <laughs> um, but they were so excited to hear it. And I immediately still was like, yeah. I, j- I messed it up. Right. But we made the incredible. best of it. We yeah. made the best of it. We were lit up. It was Always amazing. Do. And your whole family surprised you for your birthday too which was really cool yeah but oh, I remember that. that's what this episode was about yeah. is everybody screws up no if you're not screwing up you're probably not stretching and not growing that much mm. you've you're going well to said. screw up and it's how you handle those screw ups that is going to either build or degrade yourself and your relationship and and that's what this episode's about babe thanks for saying what you did there you know i think it's way too often that society deems screw-ups as the downfall and it doesn't have to be that way so if we can all work together in one way shape or form whether it be individually or as couples realizing that screwing up can actually improve your relationship really that's what the essence of this episode is all about so contemplating those questions we ask looking at your own relationships and seeing how you can use those moments to really take ownership where can you be more vulnerable and how can you work together as a team 
to let these screw up moments not be the downfall, but rather the building blocks to the beautiful relationship that you have. So that being said, if you do feel as though you might have screwed up in the past, whether it was this past week, this past month, and there might be some sort of resentment or um, challenge that your relationship is having, Alan and I completely dedicate every single Saturday to service. And so what we do is we do a 30 minute call completely free. It's called Relationship Talks Coaching. And we have couples from all over the world jumping in those. It's virtual Zoom. You know, you can be in your slippers, you can have your coffee, bring whatever it is that you might have feel as though you screwed up on. And we can guarantee by the end of that call, really help you feel as though that screw up is going to be the building block for your relationship. So reach out to Alan or myself. We can schedule that right up. And, you know, those have really changed a lot of people's world. And so I don't want to underestimate, you know, what that can do for you. So please reach out to us. And we hope to see you there. The Calendly link will be in the show notes, as will a link for our next Relationship Talks virtual event. We have a Relationship Talks virtual event every single month. It is the second Thursday of every month. So May 12th will be our next one. And it will be on bouncing back after a screw up in your relationship. And it's exactly on this topic, but it's a deeper dive. We're actually going to have a couple come and talk about their experience of a screw-up that they had and how they bounced back as well. Mm -hmm. These virtual events are a great way to meet other people. There's something different about being in a community of couples that are all committed to having the best relationship possible. Mm -hmm. You know, when you're around wealthy friends, you become more wealthy. When you're around healthy friends, you become more healthy. When you're around conscious couples, you become more conscious. And Mm -hmm. that's what we're trying to create. So please join us. The link is in the show notes below. Again, thank you so much for joining us for episode 10 and (laughs) we got the giggles a little bit tonight but it's not about you or me it's about the we we. we'll talk to you next time thanks for joining us thanks for joining us for another episode of the conscious couples podcast we love connecting with the conscious couples community so please make sure you follow us on instagram i am at evolve with amelia and alan is a lazarus 88 Also, if you or your partner resonated with this episode, leave us a review at the link in the show notes and please share this with someone you love and care about. Until next time, remember, it's not about you or me. It's about the we.